Hi there, my name's Dave. I'm an Elim missionary here in Spain. And I moved here 11 years ago uh, as an Elim pastor from the UK. I was based in Coventry, uh, originally from Derby City Church. I went to Coventry Elim uh, as assistant pastor there, working with uh, some, a great team. And uh, 11 years ago, moved to Spain to serve here as an Elim missionary here in Spain. Uh, met Naomi in the process and uh, also... Uh, we've had children we've got we got married then we have the children and uh, just to make sure we get that right um and yeah the kids are a little bit stir crazy now they're eight uh, and melissa's eight years old george is uh, four and as you can imagine they've been in the house now for three weeks we're heading into our fourth week of lockdown here in spain and it's pretty hefty you're not allowed to go out for exercise uh, you're only allowed to walk a dog so dog sales have gone through the roof here in spain at the moment um actually yorkshire terriers are very expensive to buy because i've looked into it um so as you can imagine uh, it's pretty difficult and um, for the kids to really understand what's going on as well uh, and without giving them too much fear uh, spain is the epicenter in europe and if not the world of uh, coronavirus and so i'd ask you to pray for this country uh, pray for us uh, elim missionaries here in spain as well uh, pray for elim spain and howard and sue in ben almadena and uh, just continue to lift us up before the lord uh, because we need it we do, we need uh, as the support that only god can bring and we thank uh, our friends uh, who support missionaries uh, and uh, our churches that have already uh, supported us uh, and for you as well today if you're watching never really maybe even watched a missionary video before uh, well i want to thank you for watching this today um, now i've been given the task of looking at acts chapter uh, three and uh, very well known story peter uh, heals uh, a crippled beggar that's the title of the uh, of the passage but uh, of course we know otherwise don't we these these titles aren't from god they've been added in later on uh, it's uh, really the lord heals the beggar through peter uh, and uh, john and they were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon this is verse two now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called beautiful where he was put every day to beg from those giving into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. That's what he always did. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them, maybe money even. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk taking him by the right hand he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong he jumped to his feet and began to walk he went with them into the temple courts walking and jumping and praising God and praising God they recognised as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful that they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him while the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in a place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned him, the Holy One and Righteous One, and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. A young couple from Bosnia poured out an all too common story of war and tragedy to a small church in Belgrade. We lost our child, our home, and our friends. But the horror of their words contrasted sharply with the peace and the joy on their faces. We have a real hope because the church gave us Jesus. Moments later, the couple were baptized. When the Bosnian couple first arrived at the church, they were hungry and fearful refugees. They found warmth, clothing and food, friendship and a listening ear. The reality of Jesus was so evident in the church family that within a few months the couple embraced Jesus as their saviour too. The joy of meeting Jesus, the author of life, helped them overcome their pain of loss and grief. 
What Peter and John offered the crippled beggar was the same, gifts of life through Jesus. Subsequently, John wrote, the life appeared, we haven't seen it, and testified to it, and we proclaim to you eternal life. 1 John uh, 1 verse 2. The healing of a crippled man was evident of the power of the resurrected Christ. They preached that day thousands believed and entered into eternal life. Pain and death touch all our lives at one time or another. And a lot of us at the moment, of course, are experiencing exactly what it is uh, to go through times of fear and worry, pain and death. They touch all our lives at one time or another. You are able to look beyond them to find life in Jesus. Can I just say today that what I love about this story is that Peter and John were doing what they always did. They were on the way to the temple at the right time of day. They had a routine. And we're living in a new normal right now, aren't we? Uh, maybe our routines are all over the place. Maybe uh, our routines are different to what they normally are. But even in the midst of your normal routines that are probably even new to you now, allow God to use you uh, and speak through you.